Hello, Barry. You got here fast. Speech my thing, Jesslyn. If it ain't fast, I want to know why. Oh, then maybe you could help to explain how to use the DevTools performance panel to measure and improve your website speed. Excellent idea. Great. So where do we start? Today, let's go through the live metrics functionality in the performance panel. When you first open the performance panel, we'll show you the current Core Web Vital scores for your local session. Nice. And you don't need to start recording or anything? Nope. It'll show you the latest info as soon as you open the screen. Very cool. It seems like there's a lot going on on this screen. Can you explain some of the many features? Of course. That's literally what I'm here for. You can think of the Core Web Vitals as three essential metrics for a healthy website. They're the foundation for a great user experience, which is key to keep your visitors engaged and coming back for more. Right. I remember now. LCP, or the largest content full pane, measures how long it takes for the main content of the page to load, right? We definitely want that to be snappy. Spot on. And looking at your current score, there's room for improvement. But don't worry, we can start investigating right here. We can see the LCP time and even the LCP element. If you hover over it, you'll see exactly which part of your page is causing the delay. And if you click on it, we'll jump right over to the Elements panel, where you can dig into the details. Nice. What else can we use this live metrics for? Well, another concern we hear is whether your developer setup is reflective of how your typical user experiences your site. I thought developer usually just say, well, it works on my computer. <laughs> yes, we have been known to say that, haven't we? But again, it would be nice if there was a better way. OK, you are teeing us up again for the next segment, aren't you? How did you guess? If you click this blue button in the field data panel on the right, you'll get a pop-up asking you if it's OK to fetch data from Google's Chrome User Experience Report, or Crux for short. This is the same real user data that powers PageSpeed Insights, Google Search Console, and many other tools. In the advanced section of this dialog, you can restrict this Crux lookup to only a single URL, or even match your development server to a production origin. We'll accept all origins, and when we do, DevTools tries to fetch the Crux data for the current URL, and if that URL is in Crux, then it displays the field data alongside your local metrics. This allows us to compare what we're seeing in our dev tools with field data as experienced by our real users. Here you can see how your local experience is a good bit faster than what most users experience. Hovering over the figures also shows you more information, including the percentage of page views in each category. You can also flip to see the data for the whole origin, just like you can in PageSpeed Insights. You might also have to do this if Crux doesn't have URL-level data for the page you're investigating, but does have origin-level data. Wow, that is pretty nice. I think this is the first time we bought actual field data into DevTools. Yes, it is. It allows you to compare your results and tweak network throttling or CPU throttling to try to more closely match your user's experience, which can help debugging. I see. But Barry? When I change my query parameters to something slower, the field metric doesn't seem to reflect that. Hmm. Yes, sometimes query parameters do change the page, like in your example here. But in many cases, they do not. Think UTM params and other client-side only query params that don't change the contents of the page. Because of this, and because we want to increase the chances of a URL being made available in Crux, we aggregate the data across query parameters in Crux meaning you won't see a change in the field data in this case. OK, so setting up your developer tools, similar to what most of your users see, sounds like a good thing to do. Yep. Just remember, there might also be other factors that are influencing these numbers. For example, redirects and cookie banner pop-ups are some of the things we often don't experience in our development environments. So the field scores are useful, but they may not tell you why the scores are the way they are. All right. We have probably got time for you to show us one more thing. Great, because as it so happens, I have only one more thing to show you. Another common use case is to try to identify slow interactions affecting INP. You can quickly identify slow interactions and only then record a full trace on them. You can see as we click and type to interact with the page, we're logging all the interactions. Hey, this add to cart action looks a little slow. That might warrant some further investigation. I think it's time to dive into a full trace using the record button on the right or on the top left. You click record, repeat the slow interactions you want to investigate, and then click stop to load the trace data and start digging in. OK, but I think we have run out of time on this video. 
So maybe we'll go through the full trace in a future video. Sure, sure. Hmm. I think we have lost Barry. Sorry, what? Uh, did you say something? Yes. Just saying thank you for showing us this new live metrics in the performance panel. It's a nice introduction to performance measuring in DevTools. Yep. And it sets you up nicely for a full performance trace. There's a lot of info in a full trace covering lots of aspects of performance, and it can be a little intimidating. So it's nice to get a bit of context in this landing screen before diving into that. Thanks, Very. Looking forward to digging into that in the next Dev2 Tips. But for now, ciao! ciao.